Hello and welcome to the Arrive interview where we take time to reflect on the big stories from the news and on the fortunes and affairs of the world in an hour of conversation with commentators, analysts and thought leaders. I'm Charles Anyekolu. Coming up in the next 60 minutes, we celebrate a type of journalism that newspapers and magazines do uniquely well. It's the set piece interview with the famous face for the weekend supplement. Those big features which can relaunch and end careers and some that we'll be talking about many years later. And this week, as a Rise Fashion Week, one of the biggest fashion events in Africa, gets underway. We speak to Ruth Osime, a truly trailblazing celebrity journalist who as fashion director and executive editor of This Day Style, one of Africa's most famous pull-out magazines, has been breaking ground in Nigeria and beyond with her brand and approach to journalism, earning her a place as one of the 25 most powerful women in journalism on the continent. Ruth Osime, coming up. Now, we can all do with a dose of escapism, can't we? Especially in 2020, a traumatic, uprooting, destabilizing, unprecedented year when we needed to see celebrities close up, highlighting personal milestones in a unique and personal way. And none can create that organic fit better than the newspaper supplement. And one of the very best, the cream of the crop, as it were, is This Day Style, a glossy magazine that's become hugely successful in Nigeria and across Africa with its much sought after cover page, its fashion shots and lists parties, celebrity gatherings and gossip columns. In short, as the magazine itself put it, if you are not in style, then you are not in style. And the person who oversees the weekly production of this celebrity fashion and gossip industrial complex keeps close tabs on all the pop culture happenings, gatekeeps who gets in and who doesn't, and drives this incredible wave of attention, is the fashion director and executive editor of This Day Style, Ruth Osime. She's been inducted into the famous hall of the 25 most powerful women in journalism on the continent, and she's met and made more A-listers than you can shake a stick at. With you, it's for the past four, and I'm still working. Still working. I had to stop for a minute because my brain is totally fried. You know, is you. All people see is the glamour. They don't see the hard work. They don't see the backstory. What is I got, sir? Good morning. Well, I'm delighted to say that the woman you just saw in that clip uh, joins me now from our studios in Lagos. She's a true master, or perhaps I should say mistress of her craft, the celebrity journalist, fashion director, and executive editor of This Day Style magazine, Ruth Osime. Thank you so much for coming in. I know this is an exceedingly busy period for you because you've got a Rise Fashion Week percolating in the background there. So thank you ever so much for coming in. And I'm really intrigued because, I mean, um, followed this day style for many years. I mean, you've met more international A-listers than most, interviewed some of the biggest giants <laughs> there are. What's it like meeting all those people? Um, hello, Charles. I must admit the description you just made said about me, I don't even believe it's me you're talking about. It seems so unreal. Anyway, um, I think in my, in my world, after a while you get used to seeing so many celebrities and the excitement is not as it was when we first started like 15, 20 years ago. But there's still some people that you still meet that your jaws literally drop at the mention of their name, not to talk of meeting them one on one. So I'd say I've gotten used to it now, so it's, it's just part of the job, I, 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 I assume. And of course, I mean, you're being obviously incredibly humble there, which is brilliant. You know, that's OK. It goes with, with the turf. But I mean, 
I'm just wondering with all the pandemic and coronavirus and so on, I hope you can hear me, um, that, there, that uh, I'm wondering if, if, if there are still sort of celebrity interviews to be had at the moment. Obviously, one has to be adaptable, but are you still getting the sort of access that you used to get? Is that still available for interviewers like you right now? Yes, it still is, because one thing, one good one good thing about this line of work that I have is, is the goodwill and the relationships that, that you develop, develop with the people that you've interviewed over the years and the people that are expo you're exposed to. And um, because of that, you know, it's, it, it's, the, the name still opens doors. And I think because of the brand that it is and the brand that we work for and the fact that we're still relevant today regardless of social media and what have you, some people still like to have an inroad into the magazine one way or the other because they believe that the outreach is still wide enough to make an impact. So I don't have any issues about doors opening or getting interviews that I want to. Well, I mean, obviously you've honed your craft over a long and worthy sort of career. Um, what I'm wondering is, I mean, the magazine, for example, This Day Style, requires a lot of photo shoots and, and that sort of thing, where you've got to be in some sort of direct access with the people that you're going to photograph. You've got to get that extraordinary material from people. I mean, how do you do that in these rather challenging circumstances? Well, like, you, I, like the video that played earlier on, you could, see where, you could hear where I said that um, nobody takes notice or acknowledges the backstory. Behind every successful venture that you do, the backstory is un as unattractive as the glamour of the front story. So getting photo shoots done, getting interviews done, are not as, um, they're not as easy, but it still can be done because we already have set people that we work with. And if, and if it ain't broken, why fix it? So we have photogra photographers that do our photo shoots for us. We've also invited new hands in just to get a bit of flair and a bit of field, a bit of difference, a bit of tilt to what people are normally used to. And as to the quality of the people that we also interview, you have to also stay current. With the age of the millennials and the age of social media, you can't be outdated in your content, neither would you be outdated in your personality cover. So you find that anything that is trending at the moment, we try to get in touch with whoever is at the forefront. If it's a, it's a course that, it's a crusader that speaks on that course, or if it's something to do with the government, or if it's somebody that is launching a product that is popular, we try and do that. And we also try and stay current with the political terrain as well. So I don't think there's ever a time that you have any set rules or set people that you interview. We'll follow the flow and the tide of the moment, and that's what depicts who our cover material or what our cover material would be. And I just wonder um, if you might care to sort of tell us some of the big names that you know, you, you've met and interviewed. I mean, I, I know there must be tons of them, but I'm, what I'm wondering, for example, is exactly. how you make the decision um, about who goes on the cover page, for instance. I mean, if you ran into a number of celebrities this week, how do you then decide which one is going to be on the cover? Because obviously, for them, in terms of publicity, that's absolutely enormous. Okay, let me give you an example of the cover that we had two weeks ago. And that was the cover of the 30 designers under 30. So a lot of people have heard about them, but we decided to, a lot of people have heard about them and our social media handles have also promoted their profile to a certain extent. But we went a step further by taking two looks of each designer. So for, that, for instance, that cover now, if you, look, if you look at the cover and read their profiles, you also get a feel of what their designs are like and you know what to expect. So like I said, the mood of the moment determines what the cover would be. It, um, I mean, the cover coming up this Sunday is a bit of a surprise, so I shouldn't really talk about that. And then the cover after that was Naomi Campbell, Alton, Mason, and um, Alpha Deer, who are three of the world's most renowned popular models. And of course, they're gracing our show. So naturally, it was, only, it was only proper that we did a feature story on them as well. So like I said, it is usually the mood that it takes that. Now, when it comes to politics as well, maybe somebody has made a controversial statement or has done something that is major and everybody's talking about it, obviously that kind of person will be eligible for cover. Or if we have human interest angles as well, which I tend to 
or rather we tend to sort of focus on sometimes human interest story like the NSARS movement we really featured a lot on that we did a series on that we also did a series on COVID-19 which was obviously and is still a very relevant topic today so we find that we don't necessarily look for personalities because of who they are we look for personalities who are relevant at that point in time so you're in touch your finger is permanently on the pulse button when it comes to celebrity covers you mentioned the the politician um and the sort of people who maybe perhaps do say something controversial or do something controversial how do you manage to get people like that to open up and tell you you know more than is contained in their sort of press release what is your strategy for that kind of interview now for first and foremost i when i decide to interview a personality I don't start with the interview itself. I have a conversation. You have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You develop a, a, a conversation that can give you as many key notes as possible. It is now based on those notes that I ask the questions. Because if you're asking the questions nakedly, sometimes like you do, you probably have the natural, because you're on TV, you don't have the luxury of doing some form of revision before. I mean, you would do some form of revision. But what I'm saying is you can't dwell on your questions too much whereas in my case i call the person most likely and then we converse for at least an hour or so and by that time it gives me a broader spectrum and a, a deeper insight of the person and i now know which angle i want to take the questions from and ask well that's a jolly nice tip um i should be scribbling furiously and taking <laughs> notes <laughs> from you just in case i, I run into I, I a you know would. a celebrity of course you are a but celebrity we've got you here so we can we can do a bit of practice uh, with you but do stay with us it's absolutely brilliant talking with you you're watching the arise interview plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat with a celebrity journalist fashion director and executive editor of this day style magazine ruth osime Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Zanyekulu. Now today we are focusing on the art and science of outstanding idiosyncratic celebrity journalism, exploring what it means and how it affects the lives and the work of those who practice it and none more so than my guest today, Ruth Osime, the celebrity journalist who as fashion director and executive ed editor of This Day Style oversees the pages of the weekly pull-out supplement magazine, bringing it to life for millions of eager readers every Sunday. By the way, she balks at the idea of being called one of the most powerful women in fashion and celebrity journalism in Nigeria but it's slightly less discombobulated when the term is modified to one of the most influential. Ambition, drive and hard work are her watchwords and this week as Arise Fashion Week, one of the continent's biggest fashion events begins. She's in both the foreground, the middle ground and the background preparing to turn some of the new 30 under 30 fashion designers into the stars of tomorrow via the pages of this day style. Test the character, how you work under pressure. But having worked with Nduka Baibina for almost 20 years, I have sort of gotten used to that, but sometimes you find that you actually have as more endurance than you actually think you have. And um, we've been able to push everybody, draw everybody together, push people to limit the sizes, makeup artists, designers, in fact, more so designers. And um, a few of them came, they were not really prepared. And I think there's plenty of promise for them. But what I liked about it was the fact that we challenged them and got them to go back to the drawing board and come up with something more constructive and better executed. Because the thing about fashion design is that people just think, oh, just take two yards of fabric, stitch them together, and voila, a design comes in. But it's a thorough process. She is, of course, also the co-creative director of Arise Fashion Week. Ruth Osime, celebrity journalist, fashion director, and executive editor of This Day Style magazine is still with me from our studios in Lagos. And thank you very much indeed for staying with us. And uh, I notice you're reading your text messages there. That's a sign of someone who's exceedingly busy. Um, but of course, just before we, I mean, we're going to talk about Arise Fashion Week uh, coming up 
in, in the program, but we were talking about how you sort of get ready for that Im all important interview. And of course, there are times when, as we all know in the media business, there's no notice at all. You talked about doing a lot of your research and so on, and you're called in the morning and asked to go and interview someone very important on the same day, particularly these A-listers who simply you know, get their publicity person to ring you and say, right, you should be there at 10 a.m. or whatever uh, on the same day. H how do you deal with that? Do you have a stock set of interview questions that you reach for when you've got no time to prep, as it were? Yes, I do have that. I do have that. Uh, you know, it's standard 10, about 10 questions that, you, that are generic, that fits into any personality, any age, any, any, any profession. But um, it's always good to have a little, bit of an ex a little bit of an edge. So what normally happens if something is thrust upon me with or without, no without notice? If I'm going to use one hour to interview the person, I would converse with him for about 15 minutes and ask him quick pertinent questions that would guide how my interview would go. And as you well know, sometimes the answers that they give also directs you. Because inside that answer might be a question that you might want to ask as well, which didn't occur to you before, but now you've now decided to add to it. So I, I, I guess you just go with the flow. But I've never been one for asking the typical how do you boil water in the right temperature kind of questions. I like questions that can evoke reactions. I like questions that can show a side of you that most people don't know and are curious to know about, especially depending on what it is that you do. Now, if, if, if you were a politician, for instance, I would ask key questions in areas that people are not satisfied with. I'm not one for asking questions that would glorify you as a person, but instead glorify your works and focus on the things that you have done and the impact that you're making in the lives of people. Because at the end of the day, the people that are going to read about you are people who look to people like the, inter interview, the person being interviewed for inspiration, encouragement, and what have you. Mm -hmm. So I don't really like basic, what's your sense of style questions. I think we've outgrown that. So our questions are a bit deeper now and more intense. And we've gotten favorable response from that approach, so to speak. And talking about deeper questions, um, I, I'm wondering if you've played back an interview, as possibly we all have, and realized that there was a question that was just begging to be asked and you missed it. Um, I'll have, anyone that knows me well enough knows that I've always been a very upfront person. I'm actually blunt to a fault sometimes. And I'm always a very inquisitive person. I meet you for the first time, I can ask you statical questions, I mean, can I ask you 10 questions in, in two minutes? So I don't think there's ever been a time that I've missed an opportunity to ask a pressing question. That is yet to happen. I, it is just my nature. I am a very inquisitive person by nature, and my job actually even makes it more so. So if I can do that on a normal basis when I'm not interviewing somebody, I don't see any reason why I should miss a bit when I'm interviewing the personality, especially if the personality is an interesting one that people want to know a lot about. But of course, I mean, the most important thing, I think you pointed it out earlier, and forgive me for banging on about the interview, but it is just quite interesting to know the way that you approach these celebrities and so on. Um, the most important thing is still prep. I mean, you have to go in sort of knowing a lot about the person. Um, and, and I'm just wondering if that's the best way to win their trust, especially when they're a very important person, for them to feel that you really know them and you respect their work and that you're not coming in and saying, right, who am I sort of interviewing today? You know, Tom, Jennifer or someone or the other. Well, like you said, you've, you've actually answered the question for me. There's no way you would go into an interview unprepared. It's unprofessional to do so, for starters, and it just doesn't go well with whoever you're supposed to be interviewing. And I always say to even my staff that you don't, you, you try and break that formal tension between yourself and the interviewer. I'm not saying start giving each other high fives and slapping each other on the backs, but you find that most times you need to be able to penetrate into the person's shield or the person's, you know, I don't know what to call it now, maybe, you know, you, the person's privacy, if that's the word to use. And I find that it's much easier when they are a bit more relaxed 
relaxed. There's some of them that are very stiff, and you can't help but you know try and see how as much as you, can, you get as much as you can milk out of them. But I find that most of the time, I have done my research, I've studied the person, I try and find that little. And then another thing you could also do, you start with light questions. You don't go into the hard ones from the get-go because you get them on the defensive. So you start with light questions, then you ask you know, humanitarian questions, what their philosophy of life is, what, kind of, what they like to do, what, do they, what is most um, inspir inspirational for them, or what do they do during the day? Just light questions. So I always put them in three categories. So you have the first category, which is a bit light. Then you have the second category, which is the meat of your interview. Then you have the third category, which is where you round up. So it's almost like a mechanical process. But you have to learn the art of executing your questions in such a way that both yourself and the, inter the person being interviewed feel satisfied that you've milked as much information as you can out of them in the best possible light. Sometimes. They might not, you might rub them off the wrong way, but as you well know, Charles, you, you, won't, you won't be brobeating into asking the questions they want you to ask. You stick to your guns and make sure that everything remains civil as long as you get your point across. Well, I mean, it sounds absolutely fascinating. Exactly, exactly. We've got about a minute before we have to take another break, but just in that time, give us an idea of when you really got it right, when you listened and you got something really good out of it that you weren't expecting to get and that didn't come up in the prep. And we've got about 30 seconds. Oh, my goodness. I've done over almost, almost 500 interviews. I mean, I don't even know which one to think of. I mean, I think the most current one is the one where I interviewed a lady who survived coronavirus. And I really, really felt good when I spoke to her. And it was a real eye-opener because there were other areas that had not been visited concerning this, concerning this virus that she enlightened me about. So that was a feel-good factor. Okay, well, stay with us, Ruth. Uh, you're watching The Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat with the celebrity journalist, fashion director, and executive editor of This Day Style magazine, Ruth Asime. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Arise interview, where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anyagolu. My guest today is the celebrity journalist extraordinaire, Ruth Osime, who is the fashion director and executive editor of Nigeria's most famous newspaper pull-out supplement, the glossy This Day Style, and is also the co creative director of Arise Fashion Week. And of course, This Day Style magazine is in full cry this week, backing Arise Fashion Week as it gets into full swing in Lagos in all its splendor. You can see it all online. It's streaming through the weekend with designers from all across the continent taking part. Majority, of course, are Nigerian, but there are many others from South Africa, Kenya, and Ghana, as well as other countries on the continent and beyond.
little snippet into what to expect at this uh, week's Arise Fashion Week. And of course, one of those behind that event is, is the celebrity journalist, fashion director, and executive editor of This Day Style magazine, Ruth Osime, who's my guest today and is still with me from our studios in Lagos. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us. And I suppose this year's Arise Fashion Week is a big deal for young designers because, I mean, with the likes of Naomi Campbell there, it gives them the opportunity to be on the world stage on a global platform. Yeah, you're very correct there, Charles. Now, you, as you well know, this is, a, this is Naomi's fourth year with us doing uh, Arise Show. She's been a great ambassador for the Arise Fashion Weekend, and she's also helped us as alongside, alongside our brand, Change the African Narrative. Now, over the years, this is not the first time we've done Arise, not the second, not the third. This is about, we started this Arise Fashion Week brand about 2009. Ever since then, we have graced the South African Fashion Week. We partnered with this Arise, South African Fashion Week. We have also been on um, Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week about four or five times. We have been on... Um, uh, um, and Paris Fashion Week as well. And we've also <clears throat> been able to showcase our designers in so many platforms. Now, most of the designers that started with us about 10, 10, 12 years ago have gone on to become global brands. And we have played no small role in making that happen. Now, we, the whole idea of the Arise Fashion brand is to discover more hidden talents or more, more talents within our midst and change the African narrative, which I'm very, very proud to say we have played a major role in doing. Now, the idea for the 30 under 30 was that we needed a new generation of stars. We needed a breath of fresh air. We needed somebody to raise the ante. We needed to take the crop that is now growing and also take them to the next level like we did their predecessors 10 years ago. So this 30 under 30, we decided that they had to be under 30 years old and <clears throat> they also had to be talented. And what made this so interesting was that it's, usually, it's a bit different from what we used to do. What we used to do was seek out designers for our shows and then uh, enable them partake. But this time, uh, my boss, Ndukao Baibina, insisted that we'll let this be all about the designers. And that's exactly what we did. By putting the fillers out, we got 150 applicants, of which we had 22 selection committee. They looked through all the collections of all 150 designers, and which was now shortlisted to 30. So, in this 30, there's a cash prize of $500,000 being uh, to be won by, by the designers. Some of the lucky ones will get a lot more than others. But I think it's so exciting because this is a time for them to also launch their brand. And I've looked at some of the collections and I must say I am quite impressed by them so far. So yes, that's what Arise 30 Under 30 is all about, the new stars of the global fashion. Well, I mean, I, I can just imagine that there are lots of young sort of emerging designers there. Who are the most notable ones that you're likely to splash across the pages of this day style with all the gloss that comes with it? <laughs> That's not fair. There's no favoritism. There's no, there's no more popular person than the other. Some of them are a bit, a bit more... Um, known because they've showcased in one or two shows and we actually featured one of them in the Paris Fashion Week last year, no sorry, early this year, February. Some of them are taking part in our other shows, but majority of them are new on the block, at least on our platform. And I think it's only fair that they all be given the same exposure. They're all competing for the same title, same price. So we're not going to feature one designer more than the others. Yes, some designers are more popular than others, but it's a fair playing ground this time around. All this has been but more so now, especially as young designers. And you are, of course, someone who's well known in the fashion industry. Is there a sense that young African designers are often excluded from global fashion events and getting them on the calendar is something of a challenge? I heard Naomi Campbell saying something to that effect, which is why, of course, uh, Arise Fashion Week is stepping into the breach, as it were. 
Well, our largest country is, has stepped, stepped into the breach years ago. And like I said to you, since 2008, we've actually featured on the global platforms. We've been on New York Fashion Week five times, like I said, and Paris Fashion Week and South African Fashion Week. You can't get any more global than that. Now, the question you should ask is that are the designers that we are breeding good enough to keep their presence felt on the global platform? And the answer to that question is yes. Now, for these young designers especially, they might not have the finances. They might not be able to execute their, 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 their designs as well as they should. But the truth of the matter is that when you see promise, you know. Let me give you an example. And the same applies to the models. At least the models, most of the models have had global jobs. And a lot of them have modeled for big brands like Giorgio Armani, Valentino, um, Jean-Paul Gaultier, Givenchy, you name it. And these are designers that are from either Arise, discovered on Arise Show or discovered on other platforms. And quite a number of them are actually earning very good living from it now. Like, for instance, my code creative director, Desiree, the other day, saw this young lad. I have to tell you this story, Charles. You won't believe it. There was a young lad who was all about 15 or 16 who was working at the hotel where we were having, we were having rehearsals and the show. Not the show, but having rehearsals. And she picked him up from the road. And he was a bit hesitant to come, with her, come back with her into the hotel. You know how it is. He doesn't know who she is, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, he comes into the hotel, and he's put alongside all the models who were being chosen by their various designers. And he was so beautiful. It was like a, 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 a fruit yet to be plucked. And it was, it, 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 it was so amazing, because we've had models that we have actually plucked from the streets like that before in the past, and they've gone on to great global magazines and global catwalks. This young lad stayed with us for like about an hour, and then his relatives came to look for him, and we explained to the relatives what was happening. But we found that he was a bit too young, but there is plenty of promise. And you know what he did? He said to us that he needed to go home and come back. And there was, I think, he didn't know what was going on, and he was probably a bit confused. You know what he did? He went home, had a shower, came back, fully prepared. I could still see droplets of water in his hair. And I think during the time he was with us and when he went back home, he must have said to himself, what is going on here? But this looks like a life-changing event for me. And it will be. And I will tell you about this same guy two, three years from today. And you'll probably find him in one of those, you'll probably find him in Vogue or something. We've had a few of them like that. So it's a grand, it's a, it's, 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 it's a platform where opportunities are abound for the designer and for the models. So it is, it is it's a brand that will continue to promote, to promote the African collective. It is a brand that will continue to give us a presence on the global stage, not just in Nigeria, but African continent and the world in general. Well, I have to say that's a brilliant story. Um, and, and of course, the, these designers, I think I mentioned that at the outset, uh, from different, I mean, a lot of them from Nigeria, but they're from different parts of Africa and the world. Um, and I suppose being yes. together under one roof allows them to make connections <laughs> that they may not ordinarily have access to. I mean, tell us where some of them are coming from. Some of them are from Ghana, some of them are from Kenya, some are from the United Kingdom, some of them are from Germany. Like we said, it is a global, it's a global competition, so it is not just based on just Nigerians. And what has been most interesting is that this time around, the designers are the ones choosing their models. The designers are the ones choosing their stylists. What we did was that we had a ballot box where we put all the designers collectively together and put all the stylists collectively together. And then each designer was called out, and then you go to the box, pick up your, 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 your name, and then go to the ballot box and pick up your stylist. So it has nothing to do with one stylist preferring this designer or the other. Do you understand? So it was, it's a free, it's a free, for, it's a free um, process for everyone, so that everyone feels equal. Everyone doesn't feel, nobody feels cheated or left out of the process that we have put in place. And this time around, too, the stylists are not styling the design. They are not styling the collections for the designers. They only they are only being guided by the designer as to how they want to get their clothes styled. So if you decide that you want a particular top on a pair of pants or skirt, it's your designer. It's your you designer are the one that makes that decision. It's not the stylist. So it's totally different for our usual modus operandi. And it's quite exciting because this time I think we have 
now actually beginning to see the clothes more from the designer's point of view and beginning to get their message more because they're the one controlling the process from dressing up all the way to the card work. So it makes it quite exciting. And of course, some models are more, 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 more uh, in, in hotter demand than the others, but every model will get a chance to showcase their stuff on stage because some of them too will be winning prizes. And I mean, uh, so talking about different... models, of course, um, you know, the likes of Naomi Campbell taking a lot of the designers and presumably models under her wing. I mean, are there more opportunities today for African designers and models to be recognized internationally and globally than, than it used to be? Of course they are. Of, of course they are. I just said to you how a lot of these models that we have used in, in the past are now fully booked for global, global brands. A lot of them, once they get discovered, really come back home. The reason why most of them are home now was because of the coronavirus, virus, um, coronavirus um, pandemic. Otherwise, we probably wouldn't have had as much of them to to showcase in this show as, 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 as we would have had before. Because each time they come to this show, every show we have had, we've had at least five to 10 models scouted abroad. The same thing with the designers. And it's, you, you find that most times, now also because of social media, by the time the, the clothes are being seen on different platforms and different um, 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 magazines, courtesy of being part of this brand or taking part in this fashion show. They're also getting numerous exposure and they're also getting demands as well for their goods. Now what we're trying to do this time around is to make sure that these young ones are given the same ample opportunity that we gave to their predecessors. They are also to be discovered, they are also to be nourished, to be cated, to be tended, taken care of, to groom, to grow and also become global ambassadors like um, some of the older brands are now today. Okay, well, please stay with us. We've got another 15 minutes and then we'll let you go. You're watching The Arise interview, plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat with a celebrity journalist, fashion director uh, and executive editor of This Day Style magazine, Ruth Osime. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyagulu. Now, this week is Arise Fashion Week, one of the biggest fashion events in Africa. And understandably, my guest today, the celebrity journalist, fashion director, and executive editor of This Day Style magazine, Ruth Osime, is in full cry. She is, of course, a co creative director of the event. The CS organizers of the Mammoth event have had to find a way uh, to show. Uh, on whilst the operating, I mean, they've, they've had to essentially operate under COVID-19 restrictions. The show is being streamed online and a major supporter of the event is supermodel Naomi Campbell, who is currently in Lagos for the event. This year's theme is 30 under 30, focusing on young designers, some of whom have broken through successfully, while others are looking for that unique opportunity that only events like the Arise Fashion Week can offer. Well, let's speak more about that now with my guest today, the celebrity journalist, fashion director, and executive editor of This Day Style magazine, Ruth Osime, who's still with me from our studios in Lagos. Thank you for staying with us. And I understand that this is the first time that Arise Fashion Week is going to have a virtual runway. Correct me if I'm wrong. How is that going to work and what should audiences expect? Uh, it's virtual and real at the same time, is it? Yes, we're going to keep it as interesting as possible so you feel that you're inside the place physically. As you well know, because of the coronavirus pandemic, it only makes sense that we do a virtual show. But being virtual doesn't mean that the backstage is any different. It's just that this time you won't have an audience to showcase with. Now, but of course we are also taking the COVID pandemic into consideration and making sure we adhere to all rules as required. So normally when we have a crew of about 400 members backstage, on the site itself we will not have any more than 50 people 
on the on, 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 on ground, which means that the designers and the models will be shuttled through and through from where they're staying down to where the venue is. We will not have all models at the same venue at the same time. And before this happened, the COVID test was taken of all the models and all the crew members to ensure that nobody was infected or nobody's carrying the virus. And we are also repeating the test today as well. I think it was repeated earlier on today, this morning. So by the time we're actually now on ground, we are at least confident that nobody is carrying or has a COVID virus. Now, that is not to say that we will not take extra measures to be careful, so there will be all health rules observed, mask wearing throughout, hand sanitizers as and when needed, if possible every 10 seconds, 10 minutes or whatever. The only people that will not be wearing masks are the models when they go on stage, because obviously if you're fully made up, it doesn't make any sense, the mask will damage your, your, your look. But Anytime you're backstage, the hairdressers, the hairstylists, the makeup artists, everybody's going to be masked up. And because we have actually done a COVID test this morning and everybody has been cleared of it, and those who have not, who have been tested positive, I don't think, maybe one or two, but bottom line is that everyone that is on the ground right now as we speak is COVID negative. And that is what is most important. It has been like that when we started and it's still like that today as we speak. So right now at four o'clock, the rehearsals are being done because I must emphasize that before we started rehearsals or anything at all, we ensured that everyone was tested and those who applied or who passed went on to the next stage. Now the stage that we are at now, which is today, sorry, I have to sort of make sure I don't give you the wrong information, is at 4 p.m. So as I speak with you now, the models are rehearsing at the site. At eight o'clock, there will be the welcome dinner for the designers and key models. And all designers will be presented with a participation prize. And then tomorrow, we have 20 designers that will showcase in four batches of designers each. Designers and their models will shuttle, like I told you, from the shows following a carefully planned COVID-compliant transient, transit schedule. That is very important, which is why I'm emphasizing it. Then at 4 p.m. we have the first set of models, and then we also have music by World ID. At 6 p.m. we have the second set is music by Wavy, the creator, because we're gonna have the music and the show running concurrently. At 8 p.m. we have the third set, because we have the models in sets of five. At 8 p.m. we have the third set with music by Cavemen. And at 10 p.m., we have the fourth set with music by Whiskid. Now, you must know that this is also a fashion and music fashion show. So we are, we are marrying both of them together. So that is all for tomorrow, December 11, 2020. And then December 12, 2020, that is on Saturday, we have 10 designers, as opposed to 20 designers that we had yesterday, um, on, that we're having on Friday. We have 10 designers on Saturday, and the, first, the last 10 designers will showcase, and the scores will be calculated like the 20 designers of the day before. Then the top eight of these 30 designers, don't forget we showed 20 on Friday, we're showing 20 on Friday, and we're showing 10 on Saturday. After all the designers, all 30 designers have showcased their stuff, the top eight will be announced and they will have their final showcase, which means the top eight who have been selected from day one and day two of designers will now showcase a final collection as the semi-finalists of which the winner will be announced. The 4 p.m. It's, the show starts at 4 p.m. like yesterday, and the first set is mu would have music by Falano. At 6 p.m., the second set, music by Van de Cole, at, and remarks and introductions will be made, et cetera, et cetera, during the course of the show. Now, for the final shows, which is now where we have the semi-finalists, it will start at 8. The first four of the eight chosen will be showcased with music by Olunuga, and then the last four will be at 10 p.m. with music by Asha. After all this is now done, we will announce the winner and the prizes to be won that night will also be announced. Now, the shows will be aired at Arise Play, www.ariseplay.com, Twitter at Arise Play, Instagram at Arise Play, and Facebook at Arise Play. So I think that is all the information that is required for you to know. So, 
our viewers should please tune in, support our own, and encourage our younger ones and see the true talent that is within Nigeria that Arise Fashion Week is promoting as we always do. And that is what the brand is known for, discovering new talents and taking them to the next stratosphere. Well, that, that all sounds jolly good. I'm sure a lot of people will tune in. We've only got a, a minute and a half or so left before we have to end the program. In terms of the kind of creativity and fashions that we can expect, I mean, we've seen international fashion labels such as Prada designing outfits for video calls during the pandemic. I mean, there's been a sort of waste up focus during both Milan and London Fashion Weeks with detailed necklines and relaxed trousers, for instance. So a lot of fashion being inspired by Zoom, for example. Uh, can we expect to see that sort of pandemic technology inspired outfits at the Arise Fashion Week? We've got about a minute or so. Yes, you know that the, 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 the look for COVID really is more about relaxed, laid back, casual wear, soft knit, t-shirt fabric, stretch fabric, anything that is lounge, that's loungy and loungewear. But you must realize that these young designers are being given the opportunity to make their impact to the world on a global platform. So as much as they will try to incorporate the coronavirus setting into the expression of their designs, they also have to let their talents shine through. So if whatever your strength is, that should also be your focus, because that is what your selling point is. You can show your versatility by adding some casual looks that you think goes with the moment, quote unquote, but you cannot ignore the message that you're trying to portray. So most of these young designers, I think, are putting their best foot forward in terms of showcasing their raw talent within and would we'll take it to the next level, obviously, given the kind of exposure that they're going to be given based on this platform. And then can move on to now introduce seasonal wear or things that would be more compliant to go with the weather on ground or the atmosphere on ground because, right. because people don't go out as often. But a lot okay. of them, their strength is evening wear and what have you. Ruth, I want to thank you very much indeed for your patience and your absolutely brilliance as being a guest. Ruth, of course, the co-creative director of Arise Fashion Week. She's also a celebrity journalist, fashion director and executive editor of This Day Style magazine. And she was talking to me from Lagos. That's it for this edition of the Arise interview. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja and Lagos. Bye bye and thank you for watching.